Hello traders and welcome to this afternoon webinar. I hope everyone is doing all right and you have a great day so far. So can you kindly please uh, check if you can communicate with me via the chat box. I just drop a hello here to make sure everyone see it. If you need to ask anything, please make sure you use this chat box uh, underneath. So try to avoid the Q&A area. Yeah, everything is fine. Eugene, Sarunas. Hello, guys. I will be very interested to know from which part of the world you are participating with us today. You can just kindly type down in which country do you base. Lithuania, London. Awesome. What about the rest of you guys? Only a few people. The Estonia, that's nice. Awesome, awesome. So today's uh, today's subject, it's a bit interesting, I can say, as we are talking about the psychology of the traders, our psychology, and how this really affect to take decisions when we are trading. And really the most important thing is when we are in the trade, because pretty much everyone can find some entries, can find some uh, catalyst. If you are a trend follower and you just look at for some higher highs and higher lows to trade, or if you are trading the um, the ranging market markets, you can find some support and resistance boundaries to trade of these areas. But really, it comes it comes down to what do you do, and what's going on within yourself while you are in the trade. Traders have the tendency when they see profits to want to let them because they believe the market is going to give them more. But when they see the market corrected, they have the fear and the doubt. Ah, maybe now it's the retracement or they maybe now it's the reversal and I have to get out of the trade. But the root, I don't know, do you guys associate with these statements like when you are in the trade um, and the market moves in your favor you see some more greens and plus peeps and plus dollars on your account but when the markets start going against your position then you start thinking up should i get out but when the market is going in your favor you don't think to get out of the position can anyone related with this fact so far let me know, please. I'm waiting. Yes, yes, yes. I go short then. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's great. But uh, really, that's that's one of the most important aspects of trading profitability and uh, during the, all these years of trading and especially coaching and coming across many, many traders, it's really pretty much comes down to the same fundamental thing. It's how do we accept the market as a nature and how do we, this is why we have to take profit stop loss and trailing stop or other exit rules. Yes, Eugenius, that's that's very true. However, it's um, sometimes it's hard for everyone to to deal with uh, with this uh, when the market is active. So uh, that's why we are here. And the the fundamental and the and for me the most important thing it comes down to our strategy our trading methodology because 
if we have something that we do consistently over and over and over and over again, then we understand how it works. We know how it works. It comes subconsciously in confidence into, uh, into us and we are fine with with the outcome of the of the process but unfortunately and fortunately on the other side but okay let's fortunately firstly we do have the option of doing whatever we want when we participate in the market but the downsides of that is that it doesn't leave us in a peaceful i would say that word in a peaceful frame of a mindset to be able to just do one thing at the time, become great, not just understanding or become good, but become great at this. And then maybe think to add something beyond that. And uh, really when traders, they say, yeah, you have to, or when coaches, they say you need to have a certain framework, a certain mindset, a certain thing, a certain that. Guys, if you don't have a solid strategy that you can rely on and you can associate your personality, who you are before you join the trading world, whatever psychology, whatever uh um, internal analysis and how do you feel and we do meditation and everything i also do this stuff i like them but that's not what's gonna solve the trading obstacle the trading barrier when it comes down to the psychology the root of the problem it's really the strategy to have a strategy and please understand this the root of successful trading or unsuccessful trading is to have the strategy. If we have a solid strategy, we can rely on and we are okay with that. Like other some traders, they are better in a short term or they can, re not better, they can resonate more in a short term market movement. Other traders, they want the swing trading. Other traders, they... Um, they want just trend following setups like uh, on specific time frame, whatever. So if we stick to one thing only and we master that, then when we execute trades, think about that. You execute trades in something that you are master. Whatever the price it's going to do, it's none of your concern. You don't mind simply because you know that out of this sample of trades or out of these trades, you're going to have this outcome with two to one, three to one target, so on and so forth. So we're going to talk about this today, but I'm going to do it like the last time. I'm going to go through the markets while they are active, while they are moving. And just to mention, of course, our risk warning before we start, like any information related to past performance of an investment and not guarantee future performance necessarily. And whatever we uh, we say here, it's simply based on the way I see the markets, I read the markets and uh, my experience all these years. As for me, for those who are new here, I hold a master in uh, physics for my background education. And I experienced investing and um, and trading the last 11 years so far. Uh, I like to have a long-term approach when it comes to the stock market and to cryptocurrencies. And when it comes, it comes to the currencies, I prefer uh, the intraday trading and some swing trading with combination of correlation currency pairs. And here at Admirals, I will exclusively at Admirals, I'm investing and trading educator and analyst. So just to make sure you know who we are as broker, we are in the industry for more than two decades now, 20 plus years. We are a Forex and CFD broker. We offer more than 8,000 financial instruments. We have multiple licenses, uh, some of them uh, including here, as you can see, the ASIC in Australia, the Estonian EFSA, 
the London UK FCA, the, the UK, sorry, and the SISEG in Cyprus. Also, we have the South African Canadian license and uh, many others that I just didn't put them on the slide. <laughs> and when it comes to intraday, of course, and to trading, we prefer to have the spread as minimal as possible. So you can get the most at the least out of the moves, especially for the intraday, yeah. For now, you can access our products through the MetaTrader uh, platform. I use the MT5. Also, we have our native trading now, and uh, we are in the final steps of intercrate with trading view. So hopefully soon, I believe uh, by the middle of this year, so in the next few months, we're going to have the... Uh, full interpretation so I can start doing also the analysis for you on the trading view platform and let's up just a moment guys you can uh, ask anything you want on the chat box below Remember that. So let's um, just, if you, if you want, I will prefer to give me a currency pair or an instrument you are trading. Just try to stick with those with also on the live trading, like the WTI gold commodities and this stuff or any currency pair that, um, or I can just pick up anyone I want, just to use this first example and pound USD, Anthony. Okay, we start with the pound USD now. I'm not here today to do analysis for the currency pairs. I'm just trying to help you understand important things of, of trading, really important things. And sometimes we we make the, um, the mistake, I rather say, to ignore important information the price is uh, showing us at that current time or the market shows us. And what's this, the emotional and psychological factor behind this that we ignore them? Because in trading, we don't have anyone to be accountable and we don't have anyone to rely on. And we are by ourselves when we decide to take a trade. For example, this bullish engulfing here. It's a nice bullish engulfing. All right. People, they see it from this point here. And they say, ah, you know what? This support here, uh, it's not that strong support. Market, yes, put a bullish and golfing, but we are in a downtrend. Do you guys see that? If we hide this, let me hide this for this example. If we hide this area, what do we see here? We see the market moving first upward, higher highs and higher lows, and then we have this support this support here the market come at this area and we're saying to ourselves or traders they say that ah you know what this is not a mm, this is a false signal ah i don't believe to this bullish and golfing hey it's just the market now what's the overall trend what's the overall trend here we are trending higher we have if we go to the weekly chart, this daily move, it's a part of the weekly. This daily move, it was a part of this. That was the bullish and engulfing here. That's double bottom here. Double bottom, it's a reversal pattern occurs in a downtrend. And it signals that the market can push to the upside. Now, as per the Dow theory, we know that the double bottom it plays out once the neckline, this one here, takes an out by the price and then 
this area, this distance from the top, from A to B, it's the minimum target of the market if when it's going to break to the upside. So many traders, how do they play this reversal pattern? They enter here with a stop loss there and they wait for the one-to-one. -one. But here in CFDs and in Forex, if we're going to try to approach this double bottom with this entry and this stop loss, we most likely going to stay in with weeks or maybe a few months until this outcome will play out. And due to the spread we will uh, pay and the commissions, then we're going to just manage to make a very small portion out of the move in clear profit if the market is going to push in our favor. So what do we do about that? First, we have to understand it understand this. And second, we have to use some price action on the lower time frame to have tighter entries with tighter, we have entries with tighter stops. So if the market it's going to make the projective move at least to find ourselves in a nice um, in a nice winning trade. Okay if the market is going to give us, of course, the, the desirable outcome. So, but why do traders, they tend to misbelieve the market information? Because they don't stick and master a trading system. They don't master a trading approach they give to the to the market ah you know maybe it's false maybe this maybe is that no there is no maybe in trading it's we see this information we know that this information most of the times produces this result and we don't know right now if this is going to be the time that the result won't be produced like it's going to be a false signal. Therefore, we're going to execute because that's our strategy. But if we don't have strategy and we do random things, just because we think this is going this way or some fundamental news, um, they show now, for example, uh, dollar week, US dollar week, and we're going to play trades against the dollar uh, pound and euro against the dollar to the upside that's totally fine but remember because in trading mostly we do short-term activity due to the cfd um, nature we rather understand few concepts trade them be consistent with them and trust me guys if you're going to have a trading system that it's going to produce you, let's say, uh, I will just put this 5% a month, okay? Uh, you're going to have some winning trades. You're going to have some losing trades. And regardless if it's more winners than losers or more losers than winners, because we're going to play with the risk-reward ratio, 2 to 1, 3 to 1. So if you're going to have, let's say, 5%, profit or, or scratch the 5%. If you're going to have 3%, let's say, even that one, 3% a month on profit and be consistent with that. Just from one simple trading strategy, just one, okay? Isn't that good enough at least to experience some consistent? And what I always say, if we make 3%, when I start making consistently 3%, all right, it took me some time, of course, but I stick to the same methodology and I was executing for day in and day out, only that one thing, one thing only. And I gave you that and that's the strategy I used to use and I'm using for years and that's a trend following strategy. Not necessarily following the moving averages, but mainly following the trend. Yes, I won't be in right at the bottom of the trend, but even, even if I understand that this one here turned from 
downtrend to uptrend. And I understand it right here. And I get into this reversal pattern here. And that's a daily chart. And I get only into this trade with two to one. And then I find this reversal pattern in during the development of this trade. And I get another two to one from this. That's four to one. The, yeah, sorry, that's 4% plus. I don't take any uh, counter trend trades because the trend is up. We can see it, it makes higher high here, higher high, higher high. So we start from here, higher high, higher low. We enter here, we make two to one, we are out of the trade. We don't need to go all the way up to this one here, guys. I mean, simple stuff. We just take our two to one and we move to the next one. Maybe this one here was a nice trend. Price consolidates, it didn't sell off. So it's a sign of a strength in the market. We can have a buy stop here. A stop loss below two to one again. Then we see this this gravid stone dodgy at support. It's a strong reversal indication. Confirmation came with this bullish uh, marabuzo. Not sorry, bullish uh, engulfing. That's not a marabuzo pattern. <laughs> and entry here, stop loss there, two to one. It was really three nice signals with this trend here. So it wasn't anything in the in the opposite side to indicate to take short sales. Now, if the price comes here and you are not a reversal trader, it's okay. It's okay because that's not in your strategy. So uh, you didn't take this trade. That's fine. We identify this as a trade right now. We are talking fast forward the market, right? Because I don't want you to think that okay, Theo, it's just you are you are saying this stuff right now after the market move and after we see that the um, the trades already played out. No, we see this prior, but we don't trade them because it's not in our strategy. It's not, it's okay. Not every trade is, it fits in the execution um, list, all right? Now the market comes here. We identify this inside, inside, bearish and golfing, nice topping pattern. If we have some indicators here, oscillators, they're gonna show, price make equal high and the oscillator makes a lower high bearish divergence we can we can sell it but it's not in our strategy if we are not if you are not a um, double top reversal trader for example or if you are not taking any other trades without uh, trend filters it's nothing wrong it doesn't make you a good or bad trader if you don't take any see every signal so but if you are a trader that takes trades double top you took this trade here and you should stick to the consolidation right because as uh, as eugene said it very nicely yeah that's why we have take profit stop losses we have trailing stops but the price consolidates here. It's a part of your trading system and you have to give some uh, room for, for the price to move. Price already exhausted here. It needs to get some rest. It needs to consolidate. And do we know for sure that it's going to break to the downside? No, we don't. We just have a probability based on the oscillator that put the bearish divergence. Now, I definitely uh, will uh, will mention this. If you are trading double top, double bottoms, uh, please make the effort to use the oscillators, RSI or Stochastic or MACD, MACD. 
they are linear or commodity channel index, uh, which one you prefer, it's better for you. Uh, you can use them. So you have something in your in your arsenal, like let's make a, let me not, not, not make, let, let me give you my trading system if I was about to use it to trade the, the ranges. First, a very useful ranging, in my opinion, um, is the concept. First, we need the concept of support and resistance, right? If we're going to trade double top, double top, first, we need resistance in place. Price has to be rejected from a resistance area. The second, we need uh, the price action to show a reversal pattern. Like this one here, inside, another inside. It means uptrend is running out of steam. Then we have this dodgy here inside, blah, blah. Then this bearish, bearish and goofy. So we need a reversal price action pattern. And the third, we can use oscillators to validate our signal like the RSI by default it's on the 14 uh, period or the stochastic it also powerful or the MACD it's a bit more um, slow so the signals are more uh, MACD yes absolutely Anthony MACD it's great so write this down please and here you have a, a very, very strong, high probability actually, very high probability trading setup. You want to trade ranges. Always check this. Double bottom. Do I have a strong support? A support? Yes, I do have a support. Do I have a price action reversal? Mm, no, I don't have a price action reversal. Do I have RSI or stochastic or MACD or just pick one? Yeah. Do I have something that shows bullish divergence? So the price make double bottom, but the indicator makes a higher high, bullish divergence. No, for example. So I don't take the signal. Yes, Theo, but the signal won. So what? Guys, are you with me? Does it make sense? Yes, yes, thank you. Thanks for answering. Yep. Yes, Eugene, exactly. It's simply rules following trading. Now, for how long do we follow our, our true rules? We just follow them. Now, Wesley, follow the trend or daily or other time frames. You can follow the trend at any time frame you want, really any time frame. Uh, what I will definitely encourage you to do, if you, I follow the trend on the daily, to be honest, because the candles are more, um, more, more, not more valid, but the higher the time frame, the strength in the candle, let's say the more reliable the pattern. Um, I'm not going to use an hourly candlestick pattern to enter on a um, consolidation or here. I'm not going to go to the hourly chart to find the candlestick pattern to enter short, okay? Or here to find the candlestick pattern to buy it. I will prefer to see if I'm going to if you're going to trade on the hourly chart. Just use one time frame above as your reference. That's, I believe that's fine. There is no black and white rule. Sometimes you can spot a strong area of resistance on the weekly chart and you can go to the hourly or to the four hour. You find a nice bearish engulfing or a shooting star. You enter short and you make a two, three, four, five to one. So it's, it's great, right? But again, we want to do something for the long time. Now, I will just tell you from experience and only that in forex currencies, the markets 
in a month, they gonna be some currencies, they gonna give nice trends. Let's say um, couple, every month, every month, some currency pairs, they gonna give you the trends, okay? You need just two, three currency pairs only to, to give you a, a trend and uh, you're going to find your retracement to enter like this one here, boom, enter, boom, enter, boom, until you're resistant, even until here, it will be for me an ideal target. I wouldn't even think to go up there. All right, because here it's a resistant. Then it comes to the question until when we, we buy here. Okay, we identified the trend. I identified that market make a higher high here. I want to enter from the retracement that came here. So where I get out, am I holding the trade all the way up to here? Me, personal, personal, I wouldn't. Okay, I will just get my two to one and get out of the trade. If the trade moves all the way here, for me, it's fine. Let it be. And at this at this point here, that will be the area I will be looking for. Okay. So if we identify then this pattern here and, the, and we have this support, the market made this low. I don't have any reference here like it's a trending environment so I can take this signal. Probably I wouldn't take that signal, right? And I didn't take the signal. But remember on the live trading, we commented that the market then, EMAs they crossed, it make a high, higher high. And then we have this from here onwards, it was all buys, buys, buys. Now, because this is was resistant, if we buy here and we have a stop loss below here, it's not enough to make our two to one. That's why we said, if you are an intraday trader or you do have the privilege of time to monitor the four hour charts or the one hour charts, and you gonna it happens and you are in front of your screen at that time, like for example, this one here with, 20 pips stop loss, you could make your 40 pips within a day or this one here that was just in the London session as well. With 60 pips stop loss, you could make 120 or just slightly below. All right. If you have that privilege of time and you monitor the charts, then yes, we look for longs. Okay. But right here to start selling or be aggressive on the breakout, I wouldn't do that on the daily chart. So trend following, you can do it in any time frame, starting from the one minute to the one month, but it comes down to your time availability first. And second, it comes down to your personality. Like, do I want to trade if if you you trade only the daily charts and you take, let's say, 10 trades a month and you make 5% and you are an intraday trader and you take 50 trades a month and you make 6 or 7%. If that gives you stress, you rather change your approach. But if that gives you satisfaction to take more trades for that couple percent a month if that's going to be made, then it's absolutely fine. Does it make sense, guys? It comes down to your personality as well. 50-50, yes, it has to be more than... Uh, one one to one and Eugene said here let me write it down for you so 50 uh I think we change the color to black 
So 50, 50% win, 50% losses. Uh, you said if you take one to one and a half with three signals a week, so three trades per week, that makes them 12 trades per month, give it or take. Yep. Is 43% gain. So it's everything it's uh it's easy to say it on the uh how do you call it on the allowed but when we apply it is the thing now everything above one one to one one and a half to one one point five to one or two to one three to one absolutely great but I find out in, um, especially in my coaching experience, that when traders, they let's say they take this signal here, this inside candle, this piercing pattern to the upside, and they take profits here one to one, and they just see the market that is moving in, a, in this uptrend, they just get upset, they get mad, and the next trade they enter, they want to leave it because they want to make something more that they didn't make in the previous trade. And that's simply with one word, it called revenge. And that's another emotional thing uh, that traders, they have to deal with. Then it comes to another question. When do you move up your stop loss once you are in profit? That's a great question. There is a, strategy or methodology called trailing stops. Again, it's not that because it's available to the trader, the methodology of trailing stops, it means we have to use it. And here is a trap with stop trailings. As we don't know until the, how far the market will go, we must understand that the trailing stops, it's first meant to serve the mechanical approach, like purely mechanical, like EAs or some bots. But by, by, using, our, by using the trailing stop, we have to be okay with the fact that if I'm going to see the market move, let's say we enter there, entry. We have a stop loss here. So the market surpasses this high, as we see with this bullish Marobozu, and it makes the higher high here. You see, let's say we move our stop loss to break even. So now we are protective. The trade is protective. Our account, it's not going to experience a losing trade. It's going to experience, in the worst scenario, break even trade. If the market, it's going to, it, the market put this bearish engulfing, what do you do? What do you think? Why did you put your stop loss at break even? Did you put it and you really accept the market's nature that it might retrace and comes at this point here before it bounced off to the upside? Do you accept this? Or you put this, you want to do trailing stop? And uh, Anthony, I'm not talking to you personally, I'm talking to everyone. Okay but I just address it as you, so don't, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, it, it's general, okay, it's generic. So you guys see the market comes here. Do you guys accept to be in a trade where you started from here and it went all the way up and you didn't take any profits and now the market is moving downwards? Do you accept this? And 
So first we have to know why do we want to use trailing stop? We want to use trailing stop to protect our trades. We want to use trailing stop to add more into the trade. Or we want to use trailing stop because we are afraid to lose if the market goes against us. But if we're going to do it because of the third explanation, then why don't we take the profits when the market makes them available to us? And we are waiting to see some retracement. It's like we don't trade clearly based on a strategy and we start trading based on emotions. That's why if you're going to do trailing stops, I, I it's not something I do, to be honest, but uh, from some mechanical system, I, I test it. When I used to use the trailing stop is to add on to the next trade. So if I'm going to put break even here, I would like to use this amount of money to enter the the breakout here so if the price is moved backwards i will put a break even here trailing the stop loss and i will use this free trade the same amount of money to enter with a buy limit order here for the market to push upwards that's how i would have done it but to use trailing stops simply because the market uh, is about to come and take my, my entry point just to leave me on a break-even trade, it's not something I would want to do it. Okay. So we gave the system for trading ranges if you want to trade the ranges. We have the system for trading trends, higher highs and higher lows. That's the simplest way. You can also plot a couple of moving averages. This is the nine period. This is a 21 period moving average. They work pretty well on the daily charts and keep it simple higher highs, higher lows, moving averages are aligned, waiting for some sort of correction, find the reversal candlestick or any bullish candlestick pattern and just simply enter with the direct in the direction of the trend. Get your two to one, one and a half to one, three to one, whatever is more comfortable to you and just move to the next one. It's not because you get it right in one trade, you have to be in that trade for 25 years. There are traders, they feel and they behave this way. They think that a trade, one trade they identified as a trend, it's the only trade they're going to see in their whole experience and they want to make a hell of fortune out of one trade. No, it doesn't work like this. Or this example here, we identify that the market it made the lower low and we trade this bearish and go to the downside. We identified the breakout and it took us one trading week until we enter short because that's when we have the signal. Some other traders, they saw the market just moving downwards. And I remember I commented on the live trading webinars and I said, guys, we are waiting for the correction, the retracement. So if you have the privilege of time and you are available to do intraday and to monitor the charts, you should have gone down to the four hour chart to find some reversals around this area. But if not, then on the daily chart, we had this bearish engulfing, nice bearish engulfing. We sell here, stop loss there, two to one, nice straight, and we are out. And then the market made almost two months to give us another trade so we have to that it were then it was another currency pairs that they had trends during this uh two months period so if we're gonna trade trends we and we are trading them on the daily charts we have the 
opportunity to monitor 20, 30 currency pairs, the ones we are doing on the live trading every morning. And we, we find the trend and we just look for the trend. And we don't focus on the ranges. I don't care about this one here if I'm not a range trader. All right. The best thing I learned on my experience, um, cherry pick one trade a day, max for beginning. After moving to break even, accept whatever market made. Exactly. That's, that's awesome. Awesome. I'm always making my stop loss to tie that. That's okay, Anthony. That's fine. Now you, you understand the nature of the market. They're going to move in trends. If you're going to trade on the daily chart, understand here is the buy, buy stop. Here is the stop loss. There are times, I will leave you with that. There are times the market already moved like this one here, already moved with this bullish engulfing. What do we do? Do we enter buy here and stop loss there? Well, if we can make our two to one and half to one by the next area of resistance, then yes, we can do that. But if not, then we just look for another trade. Okay, guys, don't feed the market in your personality feed your personality in the market, okay? Don't make the market to lead you. Let your personality to show you what type of trader you are and trade these opportunities in the market. That's very good to have it as a guidelines. Every time you are in a doubt or you think, should I take this trade or what should I do now? Okay, so I think we answered all the questions for uh, today. I would like to wish to everyone to have a great day. It was a privilege and honor to host this uh, webinar for you guys. I hope you're going to apply what we said today, and I look forward to see you tomorrow, those they may get on the live trading webinar, and of course, the rest of you on the next uh webinar event like this one. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a great day. Bye-bye.